It says the meeting is streaming live on Facebook. Okay, so I'm not seeing it. That's, yeah, that's the message that came up. It says live on Facebook. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Okay, so I guess we're there. So I need to get us back. Hey folks, if anybody's out there, I'm just trying to get this back to where it needs to be. Back here. Okay. All right, folks. So I guess we're live on Facebook. <laughs> According to what this is saying. So I'm just looking to see if anybody's joining in with us. Uh, let me just get this up here on my phone so I can see. We are live on Facebook. So, hey, folks, this is Dr. B from Steps to the Future, and I have a real special guest with me this evening. <laughs> hey. So I know some of you, you know, you've seen on my Facebook page where I talk about, you know, maybe on, on LinkedIn, sometimes on Twitter, and I talk about my twin. Well, she's here in person, in the flesh with us tonight, and I am so thrilled that she's here with us. And um, we'll tell the story as we go along about how, how we met and how all of this came together. But one of the things I told you that I've been working on is just focusing in the next couple of weeks, next month or so, you know, depends upon what happens with just looking at different types of career pathways, you know. So we've talked to someone who is in school to be a vet. We've talked to someone who um, is studying to be a lawyer. So now we're looking at people who decided to take a career pathway and become independent educational consultants. And exactly what is that? So this is what we're hoping to do is to give you some information about what an independent educational consultant is. So we do have a couple of viewers on. So folks, make sure, you know, if you have any questions, throw it in there. Hopefully I can see it because it's a little different now because I'm doing this on Zoom. So this is new to me. So hopefully I can see your question on there but if not we'll figure it out okay so Antoinette would you like to introduce yourself sure it is great to be on this side of the Facebook live with Dr. B um, my name is Antoinette Batiste and I'm an independent education consultant my business is educational pathways with Antoinette Batiste I'm based in San Jose California and I work with students um, all over the country. So I'm really excited to be here, tell a little bit about the story of how I came to be in, in IEC, how I met Belinda, and just kind of how we have figured out how to partner and um, just really work really well together, even though we're kind of in very different parts of the country. So it's great to be here. So folks, one of the things I wanted to help you understand is how people become an independent educational consultant. So a little bit about my background, like some of you know me already from the lives and just from following on Facebook, but my background is all in education. So I started out as a middle and high school social studies teacher, went on to become a school counselor, and then uh, worked at Providence College for a few years as a counselor in residence. And then I also taught the counselor ed department. And then relocating to North Carolina. And folks that know me know this North Carolina story, so we won't, we won't go into a lot of detail about that. But I had to find something to do. You know, it was difficult finding a job because I didn't have a professional network here. And um, it just was something um, that wasn't working at that time. So one of my friends mentioned to me that I should think about becoming an independent educational consultant. I said, oh, hmm, let me look into this and see exactly what this, this is all about. And in looking into it, I said, okay, this may be something that, that I want to do. And um, subsequently, you know, joined a, some professional organizations and now working as an IEC. So for people who aren't sure, you know, what an independent educational consultant is, that's a person that works with students and their families around the whole college admission process. So our goal is to help families um, uh, search, select, and transition to colleges. We do not, we do not supplant your school counselor. We supplement what they do. Um, 
but we work for, we do own our own businesses and, and we work privately. Um, like Antoinette and I, we're solopreneurs. So we're the only ones working in our particular business. We have colleagues who have businesses anywhere from two people in the um, business up to like 14 or 15, sometimes more than that. So there are all types of business models in this particular work. Um, Antoinette, anything you want to add to that? No, I think, you know, one of the things that I think both Belinda and I have really enjoyed is having the flexibility of um, working with a wide variety of students. We also both in our roles as IECs, we're, we're both very community minded. And so we are always um, uh, seeking out and participating in opportunities to kind of give to students in our community. There are a lot of families who may not, you know, a lot of times you don't know what you don't know. And so, um, and while we do not replace a school, a student school counselor, there are things where we can go into a much deeper dive because we don't have the same kind of caseload and all, but we're always very mindful of being able to work with students and, and really kind of draw them out. Maybe they're involved in community-based organizations or other programs or things like that. And we always make time available to work with those organizations in addition to our, our, in our individual clients. And that's, that's the beauty of having your own business too. That is so true, that is so true. So let me tell you the story and Antoinette, jump in whenever you feel like uh, of how we met. So we're both members of the Independent Educational Consultants Association, which is IECA. Um, and they do a summer training institute. So it's like a boot camp, four and a half, was it four and a half days, three and a half days, four and a half days? Four and a half. Four and a half days. <laughs> so we're at Swarthmore College and it was really, um, for people who are interested in doing this type of work and having a business. So we did had uh, workshops on college counseling. We had workshops on um, developing your business, a uh, lot of networking, a lot of you know meeting colleagues. There were actually 106 people in our class. So that just tells you how many people show up in each class has, has been, you know, it's pretty, pretty strong amount of people. So I, Antoinette walks up to me one evening and she said, I have got to meet you. You're Belinda, right? And I said, yes. And she said, because people were calling her Belinda and people were calling me Antoinette, but I wasn't quite sure why people were calling me Antoinette. So, you know, lo and behold, you know, people were getting us mixed up. And at the time, and, and then if you looked at the initial picture for this, um, for this live, <laughs> I put up a picture of us back in um, a conference in Baltimore and you could see the resemblance so much more than because we both had like short hair, it was the same color, had glasses, you know, a whole bit. So, so we just call each other twin. And um, it was funny because there was one time I had a photo of uh, Antoinette and I and two other colleagues and I was showing it to my sister. And, she <laughs> at it. and then she made a comment and I said, well, which one do you think is me? And she looked at it again. She goes, oh, that's not you. <laughs> so even my sister looking at a picture really quickly was like, oh, okay. But here's where it even gets weirder. So my mom passed away about uh, three, three years ago, four years ago now, I guess. And um, I had sent Antoinette the obituary. So she, so she looked at it, she goes, okay, this is like really weird. So it turns out we both have the same maiden name. <laughs> and Antoinette has the same birthday as my mother. So that was like totally, totally freaked out. So, so our, sta our standing joke is that we need to really have a DNA test done. Yes, yes cause, cause <laughs> who knows? Who knows what's going on here? But now, the folks, I'm just going to jump in here for a minute. This is the first time I've done a Facebook Live using Zoom. So if anybody's making comments and stuff, I'm not quite sure where those are going. So I see people are coming in and out. So, you know, if I don't answer your question or don't respond to something that you're putting on here, it could be that I'm just not seeing it on, on my phone and it doesn't come up on, on this screen. So, you know, we'll figure this out. But if we don't get, if you have questions or comments or something and we don't get to them during this, we will certainly get back to you um, in, in the um, transcript for the, for the, um, Oh God, I can't even talk today. Transcript for the live. So one and, of the, 
Oh, go ahead. Let me let me just so you know, Belinda talked about her background, having been a school counselor, having been a teacher. My background was totally different. I was never in the classroom. I was never in any counselor program. My background was in high tech and in the roles of project and program management. But I had a very active nonprofit life. And so there was one organization that I was working with in particular that worked with underrepresented, low income, first generation students, um, helping them to get themselves prepared for college. And so I worked with that organization. I was on their board and then I was actually an interim uh, executive director for a year. And, but before I became the interim ED, when I was still just in the volunteer, you know, just a volunteer as a board member, my corporate gig wanted me to go to Long Island, New York. I'm a native Californian. I wasn't going to Long Island. So I said, okay, it's time to pivot. It's time to do something different. And since I had been kind of working with kids, working with students, kind of talking to them about college, I said, okay, this is the opportunity for me to go back. And I went and got a, um, this was actually a couple of years before Summer Training Institute and completed my certificate in college counseling and still wanting to, to learn more, get more, decided to uh, participate in the Summer Training Institute to be totally immersed. And it was very intense um, that week. Great information, but it was, it was just very intense. And so that's what led me to Summer Training Institute in 2012, where you know, where um, Belinda described how we, how we met. <laughs> but the beauty of it is that after meeting in 2012, um, we have not only developed just an amazing relationship as colleagues, but the friendship. And we literally are in touch with each other every day, either by a phone call, by text messages, by Facebook message, something. We're in touch every day, which is pretty amazing now coming up on eight years. So, <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> that is, that is, that is amazing when you think about it, it's been that long. So one of the things, um, so as Antoinette said, she came to this from a, a business background. I came from an education background. So what we have within um, our organization and what you'll see with many um, IECs is people do come from a variety of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. We have people in our organization that were in education, that were in business. We have people with um, uh, uh, law, uh, legal, uh, law enforcement backgrounds, uh, lawyers. We have people who were in admissions and wanted to um, work differently, still wanted to work within that type of space but wanted a different role in it. So people have left admissions and have become independent. Um, we also have, like me, people who were school counselors who became, then became independent. And I know for me, it was, it, it was different. It was a bit of a challenge because, you know, being a school counselor, you have, um, first of all, you have a captive audience because it's the kids on your caseload, but you also, um, had to switch the mindset that now it's a business. And you had to adjust to that. So that was a challenge. Um, it probably continues to be a small challenge, but um, we one of the things that our organization does is um, professional development around the clock. I mean, we have professional development. Pro right now, we're having it on a weekly basis if, if, you're, if you're open to it. But we do, um, you know, then we find professional development outside of our organizations because there are other organizations that deal with college counseling, like um, NACAC, the National Association for College Admission Counseling. And then they each have regional affiliates. So I belong to SACAC, which is the Southern Association for College Admission Counseling. And Antoinette belongs to um, WACAC, which is the West. And SACAC. And SACAC, that's right. You belong to SACAC too, yes. Because sometimes you get better deals going to conferences by belonging to those particular organizations. Um, so we do a lot of professional development. This month, actually, what was it? This week. This week we would have been. This week we would have been yeah. at our conference. We were. We were scheduled. I think it was this. This week or next week. Next week. Next week. Because we would have been leaving on Mother's Day. Right. <laughs> next week we would have been at our conference in Connecticut. So our organization does a conference um, twice a year, May and November, and we will all set to you know go to our conference in this month and to you know visit colleges beforehand and then have the conference and, and then lo and behold you know 
coronavirus changed things. Plus, we were also supposed to be on a college tour. So um, it's called the Big Ten Tour. So we were going to visit 10 colleges in the Midwest. And we were pumped because, you know, it's one, it's a very popular tour. So it, it fills up fast, very fast. And this was the second go round. So we were psyched. We were like so thrilled and, you know, it, it had to be canceled. So hopefully um, when it's rescheduled, we'll have an opportunity to do it then. Um, Antoine, anything you want to add to the professional development part? No, the, you know, it, it is pretty interesting because we were all excited about having an opportunity to connect in person three times, would have been actually four times this year um, with the fall conference as well. And we're not able to do that. And, and it's always really a lot of fun to do the, you know, when we go and do the college tours, like for instance, the tours, the set of tours I was gonna do when for the conference in Connecticut, I was gonna do Rhode Island tours because I have not been to Rhode Island schools. And Belinda was doing some New York schools, I think. And so we usually room together too, you know, at conferences. And so it's a great way, you know, you go out, we're in our different areas and we get together and we're able to share information. I mean, so there's, there's just so much professional development looks a lot of different ways um, in terms of some of the structure kinds of trainings and, and the organization IECA has been amazing in terms of like when Belinda talked about the big the Big Ten college tour, well, we couldn't physically go, but we've had information sessions from all 10 of the schools that we were going to go visit. And so those are recorded, you know, one hour sessions, we could go back and look at them. So, you know, like I started off each one taking notes and now it's like I have this long list that I need to go back and go listen to and take notes so that because what we, our goal is always to be as knowledgeable as we can about different institutions. So when we're helping students work on a, on a college list or having them to start researching colleges based on their interests, their geographical preferences and things like that, we wanna have as much information as possible. And so anytime we're able to participate in these kind of learning sessions or um, just kind of get together with some colleagues and share, you know, things. That's the beauty of the networking that, that we do that our organization, the IECA promotes. So, which is really good. Speaking of networking, one of the things um, Antoinette and I did is um, we joined with four other people and we have our own um, kind of like virtual team because one of the things we had to get used to that, that when you find when you're doing this business as a solopreneur, is that it's a little isolating. And you know, when it's just you and you don't have anyone every day to bounce ideas off of. So what we did, so one of our members actually put it out, um, requested, you know, who would like to be part of a smaller group so that we can meet monthly. And we said, yes. So there's a group of six of us and we've been meeting, has it been four, four years, five years? Yeah, it's probably been closer to five, yeah. Oh, five years. So there are six of us in this group. So An Antoinette's the furthest west. She's in, she's in California. We have a member in Michigan, Texas, Illinois, and there are two of us in North Carolina. The great thing about this, this network is, you know, first, you know, we, we've been meeting, you know, monthly virtually before all this other stuff was happening. Um, but it's so nice because we have, I know when I have questions about schools in California, Antoinette's the first person that I'm going to reach out to. Texas, I'm going to reach out to Cindy. If it's Michigan, I'm going to reach out to me, um, Randy. Um, Tom in Illinois, um, and then the jury in, in North Carolina also, you know, gives me a lot of great information about our schools and other things that are going on. We even one year did a um, tour <laughs> together. Yeah, we went to Michigan and toured, ended up touring four schools. Mm -hmm. um, so we did our own little, you know, group of six tour and it was really nice. And we keep saying we've got to do this again. But since that time, one of our colleagues, Tom, the only male in the group, um, actually he and his wife adopted two children. So they've got little ones and everybody else, you know, either their kids, you know, their kids are grown and flown. So we, um, so we haven't figured out how to do that again yet. The other great thing about belonging to a professional organization such as ours is again, the networking. We have members in every state and, and so many countries across this world. So we can go on to our members directory. And if I have a question about a school 
in a, in another state that I haven't visited yet, I can connect with the person and, and find that out. One of our members is putting together, so you know what all this stuff going on, testing has changed, um, you know, deposit dates have changed. So we have members that are putting together that are crowdsourcing Google Docs so that we have one place to go to. So, okay, I need to see what school is, is doing this particular thing. So we can go to that crowdsource document to find that information. So there's so much collegiality, there's so much sharing of information that um, it really um, helps us help our students a lot more than before. So like today, I was talking to one of my students earlier today and we were talking about testing and, you know, She'll, she'll sign up for, for the testing and she's a junior, so she hasn't had the opportunity to take any tests yet because every time once she signed up for it, it was canceled. So we're looking to look at that and what that means. And right now, you know, we're just like everybody else. We don't know those tests may be canceled too. So, but it's making sure that our kids are where they need to be so that if things do go through, they're where they need to be. Yeah. yeah. Anything you'd yeah. like to and, and, you know, the, the thing um, in terms of the professional organizations, so the ones that we share in common are IECA, and we're both members of NACAC, and we're both members of SACAC. Um, and I am also a member of uh, HECA, Higher Education Consultants Association, which focuses just on college. Um, and I'm also a member of Nash, well, it used to be National College Access Network, and they've changed it now, the name to National College Attainment Network. And then Belinda has memberships in some of her counseling um, group. Um, I don't remember the. I'm a member of ASTA, the American School Counselor Association. And then also, because I really like career counseling, I've been a member of the National Career Development Association for a number of years. Right. So, I mean, it's like, okay, it, it's one of the things I think that that can be that I think we both have had to learn to manage is that there's so many resources out there and there's so much information. Um, we had to both, I think, get in our own way, get comfortable. We recognize we're not going to know it all and to get comfortable with reaching out to our network. So the group, the, the group of six of us um, are, you know, that that has just been invaluable um, because it's just sharing ideas and resources and accountability and, you know, kind of partnering up on some things, um, you know, and, and just really kind of taking advantage of the strengths for that, that different folks have um, and really kind of leveraging that and knowing that it's a, I, I just believe that you need to have your safe spaces and, and, and know, find your people. And I would say that's, those are my people and it's a safe space, yes, um, <laughs> you know, so, so, I mean, that those things are just, are just really helpful, but we do have to pick and choose because in this business, I would say that oh, the, the big overhead for being in this business is really memberships and professional organizations and attending conferences. Um, that is, it's a, it's a, it becomes big ticket item, very necessary for our work. Um, but sometimes we do have to pick and choose. Are you going to go to this conference? Well, no, I don't think I'm going to go. And so then we, you know, again, in our group of six, we just kind of share ideas, you know, share notes from sessions and things like that, which is, which is really helpful. So. Okay. We've got a couple of comments here. Okay. So Cindy, oh, well, first Tim, Tim, he's, Tim's in Rhode Island and, um, and he, so when you mentioned Rhode Island, he goes, Rhode Island, go Friars. <laughs> so that's Providence College. And then Cindy says, two of my favorite people. Uh, yep. She Cindy's our, our Texas person. One of our, our people. <laughs> person. One of our people. So, you know, it's so thrilled that Cindy's on here. Yay, Cindy. So she's definitely, <laughs> definitely one of our, she's our Texas rep. Yep. She's, she's our folk in Texas who, who helps us understand all the, systems and stuff going on in Texas and she keeps us straight on our meetings and stuff so it's, it's really good thank you Cindy we appreciate that I finally figured out folks how to how to get these messages because like I said this is the oh, okay good I'm, I'm glad you're driving that that part of <laughs> thing um you know another thing to mention uh, about the organizations that we're a member of um 
besides professional development, there's personal development as well. And so there are opportunities to serve on various committees and in leadership roles. So Belinda happens to be the vice president for ethics of, of IECA. Um, I think she's on her second term on the board. And um, I've had the pleasure of serving on the Irvin Katz, um, the Irvin Katz Award Committee. And that is one um, where we recognize a member of the organization who has done work um, in the community, uh, typically helping underserved students and families. And so that just speaks a lot, you know, sort of to, to, to my heart uh, for a lot, of, a lot of the work that I've done. So there are those kinds of opportunities too, which we are able, I know through the CATS, with the CATS Award, I was able to learn and meet more of our other members in the organization to kind of learn some of the strengths. And it's just, it's always very heartwarming to know about the good work that people are because quite honestly, IECs get a bad rap. We get a bad name. People think that we all have these, you know, kind of million dollar practices and that we have all of these very exorbitant rates and that we're, you know, we're, 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 we're filthy rich and things like that. But uh, I don't remember what the percentage is, but it's a pretty significant percentage of IECs do also do work in the community. And that may be with community organizations that may be providing pro bono services or discounted services or you know, partnering with an organization to provide services. And so that's something that we, you know, that we take very seriously. And I just don't think that IECs in general get, um, get recognized for doing that because there are a lot of assumptions um, just like people assume, and the first thing Belinda said is that we do not, you know, supplant the school counselor. We, you know, we, we um, kind of expand on those services. And so just a lot of misconceptions about who IECs are, what we do. And so it's always nice to have opportunities like this to talk a little bit more about the kinds of things that we do. I thought it was important because like I said, I'm doing this series around different career pathways and stuff. And I thought it was really important for people to understand and for students to understand that a lot of times you may go to school, you know, and or you um, get a degree in a particular area and you feel like this is the only path that I can go down with this degree. But we wanted to show you how um, entrepreneurial type of work in all fields give you so many opportunities to do things. So my background in education had to really be supplemented with a lot of business stuff. Antoinette already had the business background. So she did a lot of work in, in the college counseling piece because she was already doing that type of work in the community. And now she just was able to mesh the two. And that's one of the beauties of what we do is that we're able to tap into each other's skills um, and, and, and get that knowledge right from people that, that we're already working with. And plus, like I said, all of our professional organizations provide such wonderful professional development on a regular basis. And all you have to do is avail yourself of it. But like Antoinette said, sometimes keeping on top of all of that professional development is crazy. So I know like everybody else, you probably zoomed out. We are doing anywhere from, I don't know, some, some weeks, some days, some weeks I've in this shelter in place, I think I've done like, you know, sometimes up to 10 webinars in a week. Um, so my notebook's kind of a mess, but it, it's just so much, but you, you know, it's almost that fear of missing out. You just want to make sure you have the opportunity to learn this information. So some of the other things. So what else would you say about us that people need to know? Can you hear me? Yeah, I, oh. there, there was some background noise. I was trying to, so that's why I had, had muted myself. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, I, I think in terms of what do we do, kind of the breadth of services. So we work with students, helping them to everything from course planning to figuring out which standardized testing to take, which of course we're just kind of going off on a tangent on that now. We are talking to them about how to go about researching colleges, 
Belinda mentioned that she is, and then, well, and then we go through the whole process of the whole application, supporting them, you know, helping them to get organized around the kind of the deliverables, the due dates, what's required, the essays, the, you know, all the things that are required. And um, the fun part is getting to know the students over time and supporting them through that whole process, whether we start working with them freshman year or whether we start working with them, you know, junior year, it's still that process of getting to know. And I think that one of the things, even though our, our I would say our, our, our strategies, our, our core belief is, is the same, is very similar. And that is that young people and getting them to recognize their gifts and talents is really important and really should be what guides the process. And so we go about it, you know, kind of some different techniques and assessments and things like that. But it's always, we both are very, very stu student centered um, and kind of getting rid of all the noise that's out there, the US News and World Report, because those may not be institutions that really fit a particular student's needs, desires, and things like that. And that I know is a part that I just love, just watching, watching young people just come to life and embrace themselves. So um, that is really kind of what guides the work, regardless of where we start in in the process with them. That is so true. It's, and you know, when, when students, when you see them, as Antoinette said, come into themselves and they realize that they are special people, that they are unique, that they have fantastic talents, that they have value, something to offer. Um, it's, it's like amazing. I mean, that's the best part of this work is being with the kids. There's nothing better than that. It's being with the kids, listening to them. Um, like the young lady I was talking with today, there was one point where I was just like sitting back, just listening to her because she was just so enthusiastic about what she was doing. And even though, you know, her summer plans were changed because her summer camp, uh, she was going to be doing an art program at the Rhode Island School of Design. And of course, that, that's been canceled. But, but she, she pivoted really nice. She already kind of knew what she was going to do and how she was going to um, still work on her portfolio development over the summer. So, so that, was, that was pretty good. And it's just, um, yeah, being with the kids, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. Right. And the thing is, is that, you know, we say that, you know, our contract goes from this period to this period, which is typically around May 1st of the senior year. But we love to stay connected with our students. Um, and both Belinda and I, um, well, Belinda's had several of her former students, you know, on her Facebook lives. I just spent probably almost an hour yesterday with one of my former students who's now in her master's program um, at Sacramento State and just chatting with her and her mom and just kind of, you know, seeing how things are going. A couple of weeks ago, another student that's going into her senior year, finishing up her junior year at Loyola Marymount. And, and it was the first time we just had an opportunity to just kind of sit and connect and what's it been like for you? What have been the good things, you know, because we like to get that feedback in a both in a formal and informal way um you know yeah we like to get feedback on their process with us right when you know they're ending their senior year and get ready to launch to college but a couple of years into it we like their college journey we like to kind of check in and see is this still a good fit for you and and what would be something that a student who's considering the school, what, what is something that you would want them to know? And so we utilize and we add them to our network of knowledge as well. And, and that's really important because, I mean, you know, we're, we're grown folks. So it's like, ah, oh, what do you know? You didn't go to that school. What do you know? But when you're talking to a near peer, um, it, it's really helpful um, for, for students to do that. So that, that is fun too. It's like, you look back, I, I've got several students that are scheduled to graduate from college, you know, this year. And it's kind of like I, my heart goes out to them because they worked so hard, you know, it's four years. Okay, it's supposed to be a graduation and that's going to be different. But, you know, that, that, that is a very rewarding part of the, of the work that we do as well. Yeah, that is so true. That is so true. Well, I think we both, we both like the work more than we like the business side of things, but you know. <laughs> God, that is, that is so true. I can 
was like work where kids didn't have to pay bills. <laughs> right? You know, like... And I'd be okay. I really would be okay. <laughs> you know, can't walk into food line and say, hey, look, I, I love my kids. So can you just help me eat? <laughs> that would be true. That That is also very true. <laughs> So folks, we're about um, we're about 30 minutes in, a little bit over, um, once I figured out how to how to do this. So if anyone, you know, if you have any questions, um, if you're looking to work with the independent educational consultant, Antoinette, tell them how they can get in touch with you. Um, my let's see, my Facebook page is Educational Pathways with Antoinette Batiste. Um, my email address is kind of long because my name is long. But uh, my email address is, my, I'll give you my website. My website is um, my name, www.antoinettebatiste.com. That's A-N-T-O-I-N-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, he is in boy, A-T-T-I-S as in Sam, T-E.com. I'm going to put all of this in the, in the notes afterwards, folks. So if you didn't get that information, I will get that down for you. Um, you folks know how to reach me, Dr. B, you know, through Steps to the Future, my Facebook page, through Messenger. You can hit me up, hit me up on LinkedIn, on Twitter, um, all kinds of ways. Um, uh, Dr. B at StepsToTheFuture.com is my email. You can go on my website. There's a contact um, form on there where you can reach out to me that way. So there are multiple ways that you can, you can get in contact with one of us if you're looking for some extra assistance for your son or daughter or for yourself you know all depends on what it, what your needs are at, at this point so any last words Antoine before I close this out no this was fun <laughs> we've been talking about doing something like this for a long long time I know, so. I know. so we're we're working on it we're so who knows you might see us more often as we once we get back on the road and start doing our college tours you know we might be able to do some some team stuff that way mm -hmm. but who knows when that's going to be but hopefully right. hopefully hopefully we'll be, we'll be back on the when it's safe when it's safe exactly. when it's safe when it's safe when it's right to to go back on so folks thank you so much for joining in tonight if you have any further comments and stuff post them there and we'll definitely get back to you on um on the comment section and as i said i'll put all our contact information in the notes and I thank you so much for joining in. Antoinette, I want you to stay on. Um, I'm going to close us out here on Facebook.